Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the One Nation of Gamers Summer Circuit Feature Tournament number four. Once again, I'm TJ, joined by Trump. Trump, we're about to move into the losers matchup between Impact and Privet. And these guys both have some interesting decks of their own. We actually haven't seen two of the decks from Impact. And Privet, of course, running the Ogre Brute Black Knight Druid. All right. It's going to be interesting to see if Black Knight actually has any targets. Uh, I think Impact has zero targets in his decks. I mean, I'm assuming the usual Hunter, which uh, rarely runs taunts. Um, we did see Patron, and Rogue doesn't have any. So that's going to be a 6 mana 4 or 5. And that's one of the dangers of being bringing Black Knight. Yeah, and I mean, there is a potential that Impact might be running a... Um, oh, he could get Misha from Animal Companion. Also, he could have a Hound Master onto a target. But it's really hard to, to find Black Knight targets against against Hunters. And sometimes it could be too slow regardless. So Very it looks true. like the players actually are ready already. So we're going to jump into the first match uh, really quickly here. Uh, you can see the mulligans on your screen. It's going to be Rogue versus Druid. So the Rogue for Impact, probably going to throw out the Druid. Cool. While well, we're talking about tech choices, uh, one of the things that Patron has kind of adjusted is there's a lot less, uh, a lot fewer big game hunter targets also. Uh, when I think about Impact's lineup, I don't think, I think it's possible that none of his minions uh, get BGH'd also. Yeah, that's also going to be a big deal. Um, it can also be a big deal if he has to rely on Ogre Brute to connect against one of these targets from Rogue. Rogues are one of the classes that can punish you the most for um, leaving stuff on the board because of uh, uh, Tinker Sharps Royal. So those Ogre Brutes, if he plays them, are going to need to connect. Yep. We've got a uh, very ramp-heavy, well, not ramp-heavy, but a burst of mana-heavy hand from Privet. Uh, he's got a choice of whether to go with the Boom or the Lore. Usually we'd go Boom. It's a stronger play earlier. Mm-hmm. Though he might feel like, eh, I want to go Ancient of Lore, draw something on 6, because what am I going to do with uh, 6 mana if I play Dr. Boom now? Considerations. Doom, uh, Boom is definitely the more standard choice, though. Yeah, especially since Rogues... Dr. Boom is the bane of Rogues. Rogues, unless they're ahead, just don't have good ways to deal with Dr. Boom. A lot of times, the best the way they Tron. can deal with it... That's yeah, a really and, good one. Yeah, I was going to say the best way that they can deal with it is either by sapping it, in which case they're going to give them more boom bots, or by smacking into it with an already buffed dagger and then using Blade Flurry to clear it off, in which case you're most of the time taking the damage from hitting the Dr. Boom, plus the residual damage from the boom bots hitting your face after you Blade Flurry. Just such a tough card to deal with for Rose. Oh, man. <laughs> It's like, I looked at the Rogue's mana, and he's like, oh, he only has four mana available, and he had to deal with this seven mana Dr. Boom. That's the power of wild growth into uh, Innervate for you. Yeah. And he, he finds a way to deal with it uh, pretty nicely, but it's going to come out again at some point. You only have a limited number of saps, and so early on into the game, the likelihood that he has the second one is pretty low. And... Oh, boom goes the dynamite as the boom bot smacks into the minion, exactly the way he won. Um, I, I thought uh, Privet might have been thinking about taking it a bit slower with Druid of the Claw, but he goes ahead and does the innervate. Here we go. That's the buff that Dr. Boom needed. Yeah. Three boom bots. So Impact can dagger up, prep sharp soil, smack into the Dr. Boom, and then plate flurry. <laughs> So then he takes 7 damage plus however many the boom bots do to him, up to 12, which is absurd. He could take uh, the 19 damage in a single turn. Uh, this works out quite a bit better. Not really. <laughs> yeah, that actually ended up being fairly light on impact side. So, not too bad. Uh, the tough part is going to be dealing with these monstrous minions. Almost feels like hand luck that you're facing off against. Uh, the 5 health is just out of reach of oil plus blade flurry. Uh, with the spell damage it would work, but it's going to be tough to get the spell damage. Um, I guess impact is going to set up for hitting and then getting a dagger. Oil, get the uh, next turn, azure drake. 
Azure Drake Blade Flurry. But uh, he's just dead. Because as we can and see, and he's dead. Yeah, Privet does have Force of Nature in the hand. Doesn't even need the combo. Just needs the six damage uh, from the Force of Nature. So that's a quick match. That ended on what turn seven. Crazy. Yeah, a little hard to say because Privet spent like he cheated his way up to seven and nine mana occasionally, and he got the Wild Growth to get the coin every turn also. So a lot of mana get the big threats out a lot earlier than expected. It's kind of like Handlock, except the big threats in this case are Dr. Boom, which might be even scarier than just a giant. Yeah. So Privy takes a quick 1-0 victory uh, in the series and manages to find a victory with the Druid very quickly. Impact's going to switch it up. He's going to throw out the Hunter, which looks to be uh, heavily mid-range with both Pilot Shutter and Savannah High. Warrior? Yes. The Warrior. Yep. Uh, just going to be up to the Hunter to be able to have a good pace. Uh, I think he kept Savannah Jaime in his hand. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. It's always interesting to see whether or not the mid-range Hunters feel like that card is keepable. A 6-mana mm -hmm. card, just because it's such a big problem for patrons or warriors in general to deal with. Or almost every class <laughs> to deal with. Uh, just such a powerful card. If it was a neutral, it'd be played in a lot of decks. Um, That's right. And Wow, this is a pretty strong curve for impact, but he's got multiple options. He can curve Animal Companion into Shredder, into Coin Savannah Hymen, which is really strong. But it looks like he is going to opt for the... Uh, the Warsong Commander is a very scary thing to leave up on the board. Yeah, that was a big play by Privet going with the Warsong Commander on three. Uh, I have to imagine he won't be as willing to use the second one like that. Um, it's against Hunter, that's one of the few classes where doing that play is viable. I'm not sure whether or not it's good. Uh, I probably personally would have armored up, but I think it's a viable line of play. I just saw Privet <laughs> minimize and open up a browser. <laughs> I think he might be Googling Impact's Hunter deck to see if it runs a Houndmaster to think whether or not he needs to fire Warax into this <laughs> Haunted Creeper. And he doesn't. Yeah. That's Good funny. news for Privet. All right. Well, both pages in the hand it has whirlwind effects as well, but uh, this is tough to deal with. He can fire Warax into the Paladin Shredder. Hopefully, something comes out that he can easily deal with uh, from the No Mission Venner. Right. He's hoping for a three-two or a two-two to also get Battle Rage. That's good. Uh, and Battle Rage. Here we go. Start your draw engines. Very, very good there. The Inner Rage uh, allows the four patron on turn six. One of the strongest turn six plays in the oh, game. Oh man, is he going to commit the second Warsong Commander? There he goes. <laughs> he wasn't just content with four patrons. He wants them to also charge, potentially. And it's not just that. Um, by playing the Warsong Commander, you ensure that the opponent has to deal with it. You know that the opponent doesn't have Houndmaster, so you would basically need to do another kill command or a bow. So this slowed down the Hunter a lot. Uh, otherwise, the Hunter was looking to coin Savannah Hymen, perhaps. So Privet is really taking this uh, tempo game to an extreme. Yeah, Impact has been getting the short end of the stick in these past couple matches. Um, you can see a, a small eye roll as he sees the patron inner rage come out. Um, and, I mean, you have to commend Privet for Even though he played those Warsong Commanders and now he has none left, he forced Impact to make suboptimal plays on otherwise really strong turns. He, instead of playing a Pilot Shredder, uh, or an Animal Commander, sorry, on turn 3, he had to kill command a Warsong Commander. And instead of playing, uh, coining out a Savannah High Main, on turn five, he had to eagle horn bow down the other Warsong commander. So just interrupting all of these power plays. Yeah, I feel like this is a 
this is a deck. Uh, this is a hand, a specific hand and matchup, which probably the majority of players would have played differently. But the way that Privet has played this, uh, it's ended up a lot better than uh, it usually would have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Impact still, plan. Impact's still holding his own here. It's... But he's he's used a lot of his resources. He really just wants to get the Savannah High Main down on a board that isn't just going to kill it instantly. Can he do it? Hmm. Is this worth a slam? Or this was interesting. I thought uh, Despite was a strong play there. Despite Acolyte of Pain. And mm -hmm. then uh, use the 5-1-3-2. Yeah. yeah. Uh, especially since the whirlwind effect is good for the second grim patron, but I can understand using the five one, uh, not taking the damage. Okay. Yep. And finally, is going to get the high main out, and this is not that strong of a board to be able to deal with this. Not developing developing the despite last turn, he actually has a pretty weak board. Uh, he can't do it deal with it by taking the damage, but. It's a lot of damage. Yep, this is where not having a Warsling Commander does start to cost a bit. Uh, basically, Privet put his pedal to the metal there, and now he's running out of gas. Um, at this point, you might want to do the Warsong Grim Patron into all the hyenas, and you'd normally be able to, but now you have no uh, Warsong Commanders. Furthermore, you don't have the Despite developed in order to activate the patrons, but even so, this board and the minions available might just be strong enough. Impact uh, gets a good pick up there. Mm -hmm. it's too bad Privet decided not to put the Black Knight in his Warrior deck as well, but hits a couple of key things for the uh, reduction. Um, no Whirlwind effect. Still, uh, this Despite's been in his hand for longer than a Despite usually stays in a Patron Warrior's hand. It's true. Um, looks like no matter what happens, the Emperor Thor's hand is going to give it another round of discounts, and that's going to be a big deal. Um... He could slam the 4-2, Despite, um, into the uh, Houndmaster, and... Then slam face with the Emperor Thor Sand, which makes two high priority targets that Impact needs to kill on the board. Okay, right. This works uh, as he's well. Making the, battle rage. Yeah, I was expecting him to definitely draw because uh, he does have the Emperor Thor in it. So I'm gonna go with the bite. Sure. And I mean, this is pressure. It's not often that you see the warrior ahead in the health race against the hunter, but these early plays that Privet made really put him in a great position. It did. I, I can't help but think that there was a little bit of that brilliance squandered when he didn't play the Death Spite, and that would have <laughs> continued to push it. But yeah. overall, this has been a really enthralling game to watch from the patron side. Very differently played. And, uh, I think it was done pretty well. I was thinking to myself, wow, if he draws into Warsaw Commander, he just wins, but he doesn't have any more. With the Hunter Hand uh, gone. It looks like, I mean, Warsong Commander was never really necessary in this matchup to charge uh, because you're more concerned with staying alive, and if you just have a lot of patrons out, you generally win anyways. So, looks like Privet is just taking this experience uh, in a pretty good direction. Yeah, he doesn't, he hasn't checked for any traps. He doesn't know what traps impact run, so... That might play into his decision of how many patrons he decides to make. Whoa, the Brawl tech in Patron Warrior. Yeah, an interesting one. Uh, clearly aimed against Hamlock and the fellow Patron matchup. Mm -hmm. I like it. Sets up for lethal next turn. Depending on what trap it is. If it is explosive, then he'll have to wait another turn. But he'll get even more Patrons. Howl Master, not really a card that he needed, but I don't think there was much that he could have drawn that was going to yep. help him out. If, uh, if you're Impact, you actually make a mistake by not conceding right now. Uh, well, yeah, you probably do. Just because knowledge of what trap that is is really useful. 
Yeah. Also, knowledge um, playing the Houndmaster is whether or not you know he has double Houndmaster or single Houndmaster. Especially since he knows he's going to lose. The the winner of the game um, has an informational advantage because they don't have to play that deck that they just played anymore. And so now Privet can say, well, I know that he has two high masters, and I know that one of his traps is explosive. So that's a really good point to mention. Now he concedes. All right. Well, he waits a little bit long, but it uh, looks like Privet is going to take a 2-0 lead in the series. Seen lots of quick series today. Two 3-0s. Yesterday, out of all eight of the matches that we played, not a single one of them was a 3-0. Today, it's uh, a little bit of a different story, and Privet looks to uh, try and continue that trend. He just has to find a win with his um, Henlock. Or, no, sorry, Malagos Warlock. Oh, right. Interesting choice. Oh, that Malagos Warlock is running the Black Knight also. Wow. <laughs> he loves that card. I guess he was predicting a field full of Druids, or uh, Henlocks, or both. And... Yeah, um, he actually did run these exact same deck lineups through his qualifier, which means he went through an entire open with those decks. So I guess they're sort of tried and true at this stage, um, since he made it through a like a 256 um, player open bracket with Black Knight Malagos Warlock and Black Knight Druid. Yeah, that is something. Impact realizes Hunter is probably going to be his strongest matchup, so he's going to throw that out. Uh, first of all, to try and get momentum on his side, we've seen different approaches to this type of matchup. Chucky put out his weakest matchup first. Impact looks like he's going to throw out his strongest matchup first. Hmm. Even the Black Wing Technician is a little bit of an interesting thing, because uh, I would say Imp Gang Boss was considered to be the more standard or solid choice as Matt the time of this deck's heyday, the Malagos Warlock. But uh, that was definitely a consideration for this card just because of the dragon synergy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Animal Companion. This isn't the strongest board for Animal Companion, especially not a Huffer. Uh, he will be able to put pressure. I, I guess everything would have been weak. Misha would have just been traded into by the BGH. Yeah, I think uh, the Huffer was best there. Wink, yeah. wink. Uh, well... Maybe Leoc, because he could have traded in to oh, the BGH. That's a good call. Yeah. But Leoc Huffer. Been, uh, strangely number one there. Yeah. Huffer better than Misha, at, at, le at the very least. Freezing trap. Okay, so now Puvik can say he knows that w there's one freezing and an explosive. I guess it doesn't matter at this point, but he knows that uh, there is an, still an explosive trap left in the deck. Mm hmm. Uh, oh, this oh. is a surprise, and also a terrible draw, but it's a surprise. Uh, I would have expected the deck to be too freezing and an explosive, as is usual for a mid-range hunter, but Impact mixing it up. It's interesting. Very interesting. This is a little bit of an annoying board, but he does have Belcher. Hellfire doesn't really take too much power off. Um, yeah, the Belcher is the perfect answer to a board like this. All these small minions with low amounts of health, so the mm -hmm. Sludge Belcher is kind of like a Hellfire, and the Sludge Belcher is going to survive to make that ooze, which is going to look to be a problem for impact, the ooze. Yeah. So did this you play much? A, this would have been a great turn to Azure Drake and Soulfire 5-5, five five, but good old Lothem. Too bad. Did you play much Malagos Warlock when it was a little bit more popular, sort of at the beginning of, um, I guess, beginning of August and July era? Yeah, I played a decent amount of it. I think one of the tournaments I won, I was playing Malagos Warlock. I can't remember which one it is. Uh, was just won so many tournaments lately; it's hard to remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's really strong in a meta game of Hamlocks, which it looks like Hamlock. You would expect it to be more popular because of all the yeah. patrons, but just because the other two decks tend to be strong against Sandlock, so a lot of diversity out there. Yeah. Um, looks like Privet made the right call with it, as he's had a decent amount of success with it. Uh, decides to just go for the heal bot, uh, take off the the owl. It's still 
you, you mentioned it earlier, what a rough draw with that explosive trap. Having both explosives, especially in this matchup where both players are fighting for board, the explosive isn't that relevant yet. Um, yep, the ooze takes the five damage, so it's a really good ooze. Fantastic ooze. This is going to be a pretty good spot for a Hellfire. Uh, not perfect. Oh, the Dark Bomb helps out a lot. So you get rid of the Shredder first, probably the Dark Bomb, and then you can get the board clear. Yeah. Mortal Coil would have been pretty nice as well. Yeah, that would have been even it, better. Yeah. That's a good call not to Dark Bomb first, because the thing that comes out might not be threatening enough, but it is. Mm -hmm. Stone Tusk Boar. Oh, Impact looks at his hand, looks at his score of 0 and 2, and it's like, <laughs> why? Why do I have two explosive traps in my hand? Oh Especially my the Innervate Dr. Boom, Sap in the <laughs> Innervate Dr. Boom again in the first matchup, and then, uh, yeah, he's he's... He's just had a little bit of a rough series this time around. And as I mentioned earlier, Impact is the only player right now where uh, the Geico points um, dictate whether or not he's going, going to be going to PAX. He needs to finish top two in, uh, today's, in this weekend's feature tournament if he wants his spot because that would allow him to pass um, the second place Geico point holder in points and get him that spot. But right now, he's just trying to make it out of group A. That's too bad. Like, uh, It's really nice to have multiple ways to make it into packs and to just be able to, I mean, to only have to go to the top two. I mean, of course, that's still very tough against uh, this field, but mm -hmm. that was a pretty good chance, and Impact's got to be feeling pretty sad. He came so far. Uh, getting those Geico points means that you participate in a lot of these tournaments, but at the yeah. end, his decks have failed him. Yeah, uh, he's still got a chance in this one, but it's looking really grim as Privet's getting dangerously oh, close to lethal. Yeah, maybe his decks haven't failed him yet. It's a lot of burn. We're, we're sort we're of on the all-in plan. Doggies. Yeah. Uh, that would be 3, 8, 11, 13, and one more minion, but there's a heal bot. Your yeah. bot is cheat. <laughs> Animal companion. But uh, he's he's going to be on the clock now. Uh, anti heal bot still gives him eight points of heal. Even he even has side and soul as a little bit of an extra uh, heal to get him out of range of certain things. Like I said, Hunter's one of those decks where you can sort of count the maximum damage that they're going to be able to do in a turn which really allows you to play around as much stuff as possible, um, especially once they're out of cards. Fourteen. And Pac's like, ugh. Heal for sixteen, cheater. All right, he's dead for next turn. There's not a draw in his deck that can do it. He can huffer and then throw it into something. But he's still dead with the... Uh, Oh, Misha. I guess Misha is sort of the same effect. And it looks like that is going to do it. I greet you. Oh, man. Privet throwing in a, a little bit of salt in the wounds for impact here. And he's going to take the series 3-0. It's going to be our third 3-0 of the day. Wow. Pretty intense. These players... Uh, it seems like they're evenly matched, but uh, one player just uh, coming out with uh, better matchups in the series. And Privet will move on to the elimination match to face off against Chucky, who those players haven't faced off against each other yet today. Impact, unfortunately, he is out of the tournament, and it looks like his run to get to PAX has ended. Uh, he will uh, not be able to reach enough points with a 7th to 8th place, place finish. Uh, to get there, so a little bit unfortunate to him, but we did uh, get to see some good performances from him throughout the course of the the summer circuit season. Oh, that stinks so much to be third highest point holder. Yeah, uh, he's actually not quite third. Um, he's he's like eighth or something, but 
getting top two would give him enough to pass like six people to bump him up for second. Since this is the last tournament that gives any Geico points, but uh, it is really bittersweet to to say, okay, uh, Impact, all you have to do is either play second or first, and you're going to PAX. And then to be the first player eliminated, yeah, it is it is a little bit rough. A little bit rough. Um, but guys, we do have one more matchup to go for the day. Of course, like I mentioned, it's going to be the final elimination match between Privet and Chalky. Uh, an- another reminder for you guys, head over during the break to geico.ong.gg. Make sure you enter to win your official TSM PC. Also, get your Geico quote and uh, sign up for those newsletters. It really gives a uh, Geico a good idea of how many people support their esports endeavors. So head over there during the break. But just a couple minutes before we jump into Chalky versus Privet. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back. 